Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad and today we're gonna be discussing why do we need OAuth and how the previous authentication mechanism used to work and now how OAuth is making everything better and why do we need to implement it inside our application. So let's get started. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be discussing the flow of how the authentication between different services used to work and now we're gonna be seeing then how OAuth make that easier. So before we had an application, so let's say this is the application that want to access my calendar, for example, it want to see, it want to load all of my calendar events into my applic into a single application, so I will be able to see it, for example. So we can say this is like the calendar app, and what I used to have as well, I used to have my calendar, which is gonna be my Google Calendar. So my application, so the application that needed access to Google Calendar, basically will need to connect to Google, get the events, and display them. So it was something like this. But how did connection used to work? How did the calendar app used to access the Google Calendar and get all of the information and load it back. So in the old days, which was not so long ago, we used to basically provide the credentials. So this is me as a user. So the user used to provide the actual credentials, which was the username and a password, we used to provide them to the calendar app. And basically the calendar app will store this in a database. So we need the database. And whenever the calendar app wanted to access the Google Calendar, it used to load the username and a password from the database, access the Google Calendar and get the information back. So in this scenario, we can see a lot of problems that we might have been facing. The first problem is basically we are delegating the access to all of our Google account to the app. So basically right now, once the calendar have access to full, uh, once the calendar has access to our username and password, it has access to full our Google services from Gmail to pictures to calendar, everything else that Google provide, this, uh, this application has access to, which is not the, previous, the case. So full access is not good. Second, we were actually providing the application with our own username and password. So in any day or time, this guy, this, anyone who has access to the calendar app from an admin section will be able to have access to our username and password and log into Google as our us. So basically credentials. We did not want to prevent any credentials. Then let's say for any reason, then this application got hacked. So in case it got hacked, all of the information inside this application will be sold on the dark web. Did we have here? We had a security risk because basically our credentials now basically were available for anyone to be utilized and more and more problems. And it's not really the best way to do polling mechanisms etc etc so we had a lot of problem when it, when it comes to the old way of actually let uh, application access third-party services and you can see that the list of problems are only gonna get uh, worse and worse from a security perspective specifically because basically right now this calendar app has like our full access to all of the Google uh, service that we provide and we can see how this can be downhill from there so what was the solution so OAuth came with a solution so the way OAuth will work let's just take these two and the user so let's take the calendar app let's put it here Let's take the calendar and let's take the user. So the way OAuth will work is basically the user will tell the calendar app, okay, so the calendar app would want to access the Google Calendar. So how will that work? So once the calendar app wanted to access the Google Calendar, what will happen? The calendar app will provide a login screen for Google. And basically this login screen, it belongs to Google. And the calendar app is asking the user to log in and provide access to a single service, which is gonna be the Google Calendar. And this single service is not full access, we're only providing a read app. So the calendar app, what will it do? It will ask the user to log in. When the user basically will take this and it will log in to the account. So once the user log into the Google account, what then will happen? Then once they actually log in and they verify their account, there's gonna be a permission screen. And within this permission screen, what's happening? Let's make this a bit bigger. Within this permission screen, we are just specifying the permission as a read access to calendar. So basically within this permission screen, what we have done is we have provide only read access to the calendar. And once we approve it, the Google Calendar basically will say, okay, I now receive the credentials, I received the permission, and then now the Google Calendar, what will it do? It will return back to the Calendar app. Let's make this a bit bigger. It will return back to the Calendar app token, authorization token, and it will be provided also with a refresh token and a timestamp and so much more. But for now, we're going to be focusing on this. So basically, once we have this authentication in place, the permissions are in place, the Google Calendar will provide us back with the authorization token and a refresh token and a timestamp. So we're going to be understanding what are these. So let's start with the authorization token. The authorization token is basically the key that this application, the calendar app, will be utilizing to access the Google Calendar. Because right now, once the Google has authenticated and gave the permission, this is 
where the user's interaction with those permissions and everything just ended. We're not giving the password to the calendar app. We're not giving, we're not storing the credentials there. We're not. We're basically, once we logged in, we basically told Google to provide a key to the calendar app. So whenever it needs to read the calendar of uh, events in our calendar, only read, it will be able to utilize this token to access it. So this token here will basically gonna be utilized. I'm just gonna put this here so we can see better. So whenever the calendar app wants to actually access the Google calendar, all it needs to do is send a request and inside the header, it needs to send the auth token, which is gonna be the authorization token. And once we send that authorization token, the Google calendar will, if I will evaluate this token. Is this a valid token? Does it have the right permission? Uh, is it fired or not? If it passed all of this information, then the calendar, uh, the Google will return back to the calendar app all of the events that's in my calendar. If not, it will just return a uh, 401 unauthorized request. So that's great. So now we know how that will work. So now we basically eliminated the problem of having credentials. We eliminated the problem of storing them. We eliminated the problem of someone has full access to our account. We eliminated the problem of permissions inside our account and we made it much more simpler. Now we can see here that this token has a timestamp. So this token will only last for five minutes. So we don't want every five minutes that the user to log in again, get a new token. So this is where refresh token comes into place. Refresh token basically allows us to generate a new authorization token whenever we need to get new events or whenever when our authorization token has expired. So the way that will work is basically our calendar app. I'm just gonna repeat those because it's a bit easier. So our calendar app will basically send a request to the Google Calendar say, okay, hi Google Calendar, I have an expired auth token and this is my refresh token. And the refresh token has also a timestamp which needs to be valid. And if the timestamp of the refresh token has expired, we need to ask the user to log in. So that's gonna be the main caveat there. But now let's say for the, for the time being, the refresh token is a valid and has a valid timestamp. So the auth token here has ex is expired and we're asking Google Calendar to actually refresh this. So once the Google Calendar actually gets this request to refresh the Google, uh, the authorization token it will check the validity of the refresh token the timestamp it will check if it was an actual valid authorization token it will check how long ha has it been since it has been generated etc etc if it's the last one that has been generated and then once it has all of this information then google calendar if everything is passed it will return back to the calendar app it will return a new auth token it will return a new refresh token and it will return the timestamps for both auth token and refresh token for it to be authorized as well as many other things. So now we can see that this authorization flow which is happening between calendar and Google app is automatically happening in the background. We're not involving the user again. We're not re-asking for permission. Everything is basically happening in the background and we're basically delegating all of this for these services to communicate with each other. We're basically allowing these, these services to have a full flow of communication without relying on any third party. We're not relying on the credentials, directly credentials from the user and we're not storing those sensitive credentials inside the application. So it's a win-win for everyone. So now that we have basically had this information exchange between the two, now we can see that this is how the application should communicate between Calendar as well as Google Calendar. So now let us discuss what is a short-lived token and a long-lived token. And we have tapped into this topic a bit before, but basically a short-lived token, short-lived token and a long-lived token. So a short-lived token is basically our authorization token and our long lift token is basically our refresh token. Let us understand why is it called short lift and why the other one is called long lift. So a short lift token basically mean is the authorization token that's only gonna be living for a certain amount of time within our application, which is gonna be very short, like maybe a minute, maximum five minutes, which is a bit debatable, but the best way is to have it for then between one and five minutes. So that uh, authorization token, it will allow us to actually get inf get information from the third party service like the Google Calendar. But what happened if this token has been stolen? So what happened if someone tried to do a man in the middle attack and tried to capture this information? So that short lift token will basically anyone who stole it will be able to do a certain amount of requests before that token expired and they will not going to be able to use the token anymore so that's why it's really good to have the authorization token as a short-lived token because we're not actually providing it with a lot uh, uh, with a long life spam where someone if someone stole it they will have access to information on the other hand when you're utilizing a refresh token we want to provide a seamless exchange between the ap application and the service and we want to make sure that the user has the best way has the best interaction with our application we don't want the user to actually 
have the relogin over and over again. So this is where refresh token into place. It will allow the exchange of the authorization token in a seamless way without the user ever noticing. That's why whenever we log in on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter on our phone, we only have to log in once and then we basically have access to the application because in the background, they have our refresh token, our authorization token, our permission list, etc, etc available for them so they can actually utilize them out of the box. And this is going to be the main power that this is going to be providing. So now let us utilize a really nice tool here, which is going to be our AI tool. And I'm going to tell it to actually explain the generate an auth an OR 2.0 authentication flow. So let us see how this will actually help us to understand all of this. A sequence diagram has been generated. Let's go through the sequence diagram so we're actually able to follow the same exact process of what's happening. So something that we need to keep in mind here that this entire flow, we can see that the user interact with our application is actually pretty limited. So once we do a request to sign in, the application will handle the negotiation with the authorization server, which is gonna be our Google login page. And then here we can see the user only inputting the username and the password in order for them to access. Once they inputted the username and the password the user involvement is finished then it's about the client application and the authorization server which is going to be the log uh, google login page is to do the negotiation so once these uh, the user provide their uh, credentials then the client application and the google authorization servers are basically doing the negotiation to verify the permissions to verify the credentials to make sure that we got the authorization token and the access token once everything is done we can see the google provide back access token and then basically the client app will be able to utilize the access token with the permission to get the information back and we can see the, how this flow seamlessly work in the background while users only have to interact with it a limited time and we can see that all of those different mechanisms are there to help us facilitate this communication so the main purpose behind this video is for us to actually discover authorizations and understand how the flow will work because basically what we're planning to do is within the future videos we're going to be building our own custom authentication mechanism and we basically we wanted to see how we wanted to understand first the flow how it works before we can actually do the implementation i hope this video was helpful if you like this video please like share and subscribe if you'd like to support me please consider supporting me on patreon or buying me a coffee with that said thank you very much for watching and have a great day if you have any questions please make sure you mention them in the comments down below again thank you very much for watching and have a great day